Hey guys, we got a Bears mailbag video coming up in just a second from earlier in the week, answering questions about this game and everything else surrounding this football team right now. And obviously the Nate Davis story is what's catching the headlines today. And just wanted to hop on here one more time and just uh, discuss it one more time with all of you. Nate Davis lost a family member today. That is why he did not travel with the team. And according to reports, that has been the personal issue he's been dealing with for a while as this family member has been battling a terminal illness. My thoughts and prayers are with Nate Davis. I think this is a learning experience for a lot of people. Uh, people were saying, were questioning, is he lazy? Why is he in and out? I'll even admit I was a little frustrated at not knowing what was going on and I apologize for that. I apologize for suggesting that, you know, maybe the Bears could have come out and to protect Nate Davis at some point during these past couple of months and said, hey, we can't get into the specifics, but he's got a family situation going on. That's why he's in and out. He's got our full support. While that maybe would help, if he didn't want that, then that's his business and that's his right. And, uh, you know, after talking with people on social media, uh, I, I completely agree with that. So I apologize for even suggesting that. Uh, it's not my place. It's not anybody else's place. It's a very sensitive situation. And, uh, you know, I just pray that he's able to uh, be around loved ones and uh, get through this because the death of a family member is very, very hard. Most of us have dealt with that or will deal with that at some point. Uh, so I hope uh, Nate Davis uh, is doing okay, will be doing okay. And uh, whenever he's ready to return back to the Bears uh, is completely fine with me and hopefully is completely fine with the Bears as well because family first always. Um, as someone who's got a five month old at home, I've never felt that more than I have these past few months. So I wish him the best. Uh, I apologize if I uh, said anything wrong. That was not my intent. Um, Rolly and I will be live tomorrow for a Bears versus Bucks watch party. Uh, so join us for that, 11 a.m. Central Time for pregame show, full watch party starting at noon. And uh, coming up next, uh, full Bears mailbag questions about this matchup with the Bucks and everything else surrounding this football team. So stay tuned. I'm Harrison Graham. You're watching Chicago Bears Now by Chat Sports. We're going to get into your mailbag questions coming up here. If you want more videos on the daily, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Let's go to Zach Fine. He says, grade Darnell Wright A to F. If you're grading him on an overall, like, just play scale, I'd probably give him, like, a C, C minus. If you're grading him on a Rookie right tackle making his first start, I'd probably give him like a BB minus. I don't think he was that bad. The tackles played better than the guards. I kind of thought in real time it was the other way around. I didn't think the interior played good, but I thought the tackle struggled more. But on second review, I thought the tackles played better. Now, Braxton Jones had two brutal holds, and penalties just kill drives. But outside of those two plays, he played pretty well. And Darnell Wright, I think he gave up three pressures on like – 30-something snaps when he – oh, there was a stat out there. He was isolated one-on-one -on, -one on 27 snaps and gave up three pressures. That's not bad. Like, for a rookie tackle, first start, yeah, I, I thought he was fine. Jake, Roshan needs more touches. I, I'll tell you this right now. I would start Roshan this week. The Bucks are going to blitz a lot, so you need more protection, uh, which he's your best blocking running back. And I just think he's the type of back, like, I, I expect to see more under center 12, maybe even occasional 13 personnel, get the fullback in there, run the rock. Um, I think Roshan's the type of guy that can wear you out over the course of a game. And then you hit him with Khalil Herbert, who has proven in his first two years is like the number two change of pace back. He's great in that role. Maybe he's not a lead back. Maybe Roshan is the guy who should be getting those first touches. Dennis Henman, what's your concern level on the Bucks receiving core versus this Bears secondary this weekend? I fear Mike Evans and Chris Godwin can go for 100 each. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't think Baker's that good, but I'll say this. I don't think Jordan Love had to do anything special last week because, A, he had all day to throw, and, B, he was throwing to wide-open guys a lot of the time. These are NFL players. So if Baker just has all day to throw and guys are just streaking open – He's an NFL quarterback. He can make those throws. So I think you got to generate more pressure. And obviously, you got to be 
more productive in the secondary. Obviously, Kyler Gordon's on IR now. That doesn't help. Josh Blackwell was banged up today, so if he's out, or banged up on Thursdays, he didn't practice, so I don't know if he's going to play. If he doesn't, who plays nickel? I don't know. Do you play more base, three linebacker sets? I think that could happen. So, yeah, I mean, Godwin and Evans are good players. That's the thing. Like, I think people are like, the Bucs are the worst team in the NFL. It's like, no. Like, yeah, at quarterback, it's not very good, but the rest of that roster is actually pretty strong. William Brock, they need to get a win, or they need a win to get some confidence back after watching Fields media. He didn't seem the t- same type of Fields. I just think the energy's down, man. And, you know, he did say one thing that Brisker and him talked, and they were both just like, yo, man, we, we got to bring the energy and the juice all week and through four, for four quarters. So um, that's my expectation. They got to take the energy to Tampa. And that's true for any road game. you got to bring the extra juice to give yourself a chance. Road games are tough to win in the NFL regardless of the opponent. Um, you know, your back's against the wall. you you, you got to leave everything out there if you're the Chicago Bears. Who you got in this one? Type CHI for the Bears, TB for the Buccaneers. Um, I picked the Bears in a tight one somewhat reluctantly, but I just got to will this team right now. So I'll go Bears, but uh, I would not be shocked if it went either way. Wesley Lewis, I hope that Kevin Warren had a meeting with Poles, Eberflus, and the entire coaching staff to lay down the law. I do think Kevin Warren being in the building is a good thing because in the past when something like this happens, it's like, who's holding the GM and coach accountable? Ted Phillips? George McCaskey? No. Like, Kevin Warren is a guy who's not going to be afraid to call meetings and be like, all right, guys, what the hell was that? Let's talk through this. Like, this is not a good enough expectation. So I do wonder, too, like, if this really went south this year, and I'm not saying it will. I'm hoping it won't, obviously. Like, A, does Kevin Warren have the power to just pull the plug on this regime uh, because he got hired after this regime did? And B, uh, would he be willing to do so? Like, let's say Fields doesn't suffer an injury and this team goes 5-12. and 12. Could he make major changes? I don't know. He could. Maybe. Rocket Money is the place to go to cancel any unnecessary subscriptions and save yourself money because that's what Rocket Money is. It's a personal finance app that will get rid of any unwanted subscriptions and helps you lower your bills all in one place as well as monitoring your spending. With Rocket Money, you can negotiate to lower your bills for up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money will take care of the rest. They also monitor all of your expenses, recommend custom budgets based on your past spending, and they'll even send you notifications when you've reached your spending limit. That's awesome. Keep up to date on a daily basis. With over 3 million users and counting, Rocket Money customers have saved an average of $720 per year. Yeah, that's a lot of cheddar that you could do a lot with. So use our link below, rocketmoney.com slash bears now. Download the Rocket Money app today. That link is in the comments and in the description. And start saving money. Cancel those subscriptions you're not using anymore with the single click of a button. It's Rocket Money. Start saving money. Sammy, from the outside looking in, it appears Paul's got good players, so I think it's the coaching. Yeah, I mean, if I had to blame... If I had to order the level of blame in terms of front office, players, coaching... I would go I would go coaching one pretty steep drop off and then players in front office like kind of close together because look I don't think Ryan Poles is hit on all his decisions the Claypool one looks like a really bad one second round pick for a guy who's done nothing for you literally nothing um you know even if Darnell Wright I still think he's going to be a really good player I thought he showed good signs on Monday I was in favor of passing on Jalen Carter because I think what the Bears were in their rebuild, that was a big risk. He looks like a dominant presence already, though. You don't think they could use that guy at that three-tech position? Look, even if I'm against it, it's the GM's job to make those decisions. That could be one he regrets. So, you know, I I don't think Poles is just lighting it up either. Like, I, I think everybody has to be held accountable if things continue to go this way. Tim Griffin, why are we so bad at finding quarterbacks no matter who is the GM? It, is it the owners getting involved? I still think getting Fields with the 11th overall pick was actually decent value. I do. He was the second best quarterback in that draft, in my opinion, going into it. Like, I've started to question, I mean, have they overcoached him? Like, w- with him not being – he went from being over-aggressive to not aggressive at all. Like, we've seen him be aggressive in the NFL, and that's, like, gone away. 
with him as a passer. So, like, they got to find that balance there. That's why I've, I've really started to question the coaching recently. Jeff Cowell, or Cowell, uh, Fields needs to change the plays when needed, just like Jim McMahon, to make the offense succeed back in 85. It's always back to 1985. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I think number one, you got to call, you have to, you have to get him going with some design runs. That's number one. Number two, I think you got to get under center a lot more and run the football that way, set up play action, boots, all that stuff, stuff that really sparked this offense last year. Uh, and then hopefully you can build off of that. That's what you need to do. Speaking of the quarterback, fill in the blank for us. Justin Fields will have blank touchdowns this week. How many? How many touchdowns? Total touchdowns. He had one in week one. He threw for one. I'll set the over under at one and a half, and I'll take the over. Chicago ain't for everybody, uh, says. Poles will fire the staff before he trades JF1. That's an interesting question. What's more likely at the end of this year? Justin Fields gets traded or this coaching staff gets fired? I actually think it's – I think it's Fields gets traded is more likely because Poles hasn't picked his quarterback yet. He didn't draft Fields. I'm not saying that's what I would want, what I would do. I'm saying if I had to guess what's more likely, I think that would be more likely. But we're a long way away, 16 games to go. Uh, I'm still uh, behind Justin Fields and hoping he's the guy. DC Viper, if Claypool played week two and repeats last week, do you just cut him after the game? He really doesn't look like he wants to be there. I don't know if you would cut him. I do think you'd bench him. Um, yeah, look, if the tape comes back next week and the lack of effort is clear and he's just not producing, I think the next step is he's inactive next week. You see if he responds to that with multiple weeks of good practices. But at that point, like, you know, it's it would be all but lost. Like, you really need Claypool to go out there and play hard. And I think one thing that could really help, by the way, is you see receivers like this all over the NFL. They're egos. They want the ball. Get him a couple of catches early. I know we want to get DJ more involved. That's priority A. Like, I'm not prioritizing Claypool over anything. But, like, I think if you give Claypool the ball a couple times, even on, like, a jet sweep or something, just let him touch the ball, he might, like, just – that personality might open up where he's talking shit to people. We saw that in training camp. But, like, if he's never involved, it's like – he just – they may not be using him to what his personality is properly. Andre Bryant, what if the Bears' plan is to tank and keep Justin Fields? <laughs> it's not. Their plan is not to tank again. Ryan Poles is on record saying, I expect this team to have the attitude that they can go into every game and have a chance to win. He said that. Like, they're not, they're not tanking. Like, we did that last year. We're beyond that now. That's not the plan. Jeremy asks, appreciate the super chat. Do you think we would be better if we gave Fields more power to change plays at the line? Look, to be clear, we don't know to the extent what his power is the line of scrimmage. I think he should have more than what appears to be the case, but we don't know for sure. So let's just make that clear. But I think he should. Like, listen, year two in an offense, year three in the NFL, like this is in some ways a make or break year for him. Give him more power. Sink or swim with this guy, right? That's why I want him to be more aggressive. I want Getsy to encourage him to be more aggressive. Like, let's get that clear answer by the end of the year. I don't want to, like, try and grind out games 17 to 10, go 8 and 9, but then be like, well, do we have the quarterback or not? I would rather go 5 and 12 and be like, yep, he's not the guy. Easy decision. Speaking of week two. The next measuring stick for Justin Fields is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as they take on Baker Mayfield in the box. We will be live on Sunday at 12 Eastern, 11 a.m. Central time. So be sure to subscribe and join us for this one. Uh, as close to a must win as it gets, I think it's a must win, but uh, got to avoid that dreaded 0-2 start.